that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will rest upon us, that supernaturally by your spirit, Lord, you will reveal what we need to know, and you will continue that work in us. You said, Lord, that you've begun a good work in us, and you will continue that work until the coming of the Lord. So we want to thank you, Lord, that we can just anchor our soul on your word, which you have spoken. And we thank you now for all the opportunities that you do give us to share the good news with people everywhere we go. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We've been talking about uh, Revelation, of course, and I want to give everybody one of these. So make sure that everybody gets one of these, the events of tribulation years. Hallelujah. While they're giving those out, uh, Willie, put Revelation, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, no, no, Luke 2444, 2444. Of course, this is a teaching, it's not preaching, it's teaching that we might learn some things and know the day that we live in. So don't start reading and get too far ahead of me. How many, when you went to school, you paid attention to the teacher? Let me see your hands. <laughs> Not many. A couple. That's good. <laughs> That's one thing I need to repent of. I'd always look out the window, you know, had my mind on something to eat, what I was going to do after school. <laughs> you got two of them. All right. That's no problem. Now, when you get a chance, you can study all of that. We won't cover everything on it. But for those that have been coming. But let's look at this scripture. And before we, before we get it actually on the tape, I want to just share, share this first. We all have questions. I'm 82 years old and in my life journey with God, when I was saved when I was 26 years old, Back then, there's a lot of things I didn't understand. Just like when you went to school. But how many of you know, how many started on the, in the 12th grade? <laughs> it worked down. <laughs> you started in the first grade, and you had to learn what was in the first grade to help you understand what was in the second grade. And then you had to understand certain things in the second grade until it, that helped you to understand things in the third grade. Well, it's the same thing in our spiritual lives. It's precept upon precept, concept upon concept. First grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. All right, right on up. So, you have questions, but I'll, I'll give you this little counsel. God knows what he's doing. And if you read Job, uh, the Lord had to say to Job, uh, Job, where was you when I created the universe? A lot of people talk to me and they don't understand. I said, just God knows what he's doing. Everybody say God knows what he's doing. You might not like it, but he knows what he's doing. So you're not smarter than God. When you create some worlds and create some folks, then we'll, we'll graduate you. See, none of us is smarter than God. So nail that down. God knows what he's doing. And you might not understand a lot of things in the scriptures of why God did certain things. But he's very smart, very intelligent to bring something out of nothing. I'd say that he's pretty smart. How about that? Huh? Okay, now you got that nailed down? Hold on to that. All right, that's very important. That'll help you get through some things that you don't understand until you grow up to a point or a level of maturity where you can understand it, okay? How many, right off when you had kids, you begin to teach them when they were one year old, you taught them ABCs, how to read. Huh? They had to reach a certain age before you actually begin to teach them certain things. So you say, well, I've been going to church for 50 years. Fine, what do you know? <laughs> 
You say, what are you doing? Well, I know all of you are doing a lot of things because I see your lives. And, and, and Greg, you haven't been here long, but everybody here witnesses. Everybody's doing something for God here, you know. And uh, in fact, we're touching more people today than we ever had in our life through the Internet. Thousands of people now that have listened to the messages here. So we're reaching the whole, touching the whole world with the gospel. And uh, I know that many of these people, where they go, they witness, you know, just like you do, like I do, like uh, Spencer does, and many of you are doing. So you'll learn that along the way. So look at this scripture now. Then he said to them, that's Jesus talking. This is what I told you while I was still with you. Now he's in his resurrected body here, Jesus, talking to his disciples. Everything which is written concerning me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. All right, you put that stake down. It must be fulfilled. Well, at that point, we had 4,000 years and Jesus had already been crucified and 4,000 years, all the different things, all the way back to Adam and Eve, the things that, that God had told the prophets to write down that would happen before Jesus would be crucified. All of those prophecies, everything that was written about him was fulfilled right on up to his death. Now you think about that. If your mind is alert and alive, and if you can comprehend that, you got to stop and think, wow, who can tell the future but God? And so he told the future through the prophets and everything, and you can check it out in the scriptures. By the way, I have here 354 prophecies that's already been fulfilled. Right there, are those pieces of paper right there. All of those, look at them. When it was, when it was, to, when it was to, uh, when it was, when it was spoken, and when it was fulfilled. There they are, right there. Page after page. Look at that. Page after page, three hundred, and they have been fulfilled, and they had to be fulfilled. That is, those scriptures had to be fulfilled before he could be crucified. And the date that was given in Daniel 9.27, right to the day that Jesus Christ was crucified, it was prophesied he'd be crucified on that day. Somebody say amen or something. Amen. Are you out there? <laughs> Are you alive? <laughs> Oh, put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> All right, I'm just trying to wake you up a little bit here, okay? You need to be woke up. So remember that now. So from this point on, before the Lord, before the rapture, and before the second coming, before the tribulation, certain things that have been prophesied that has to be uh, come into place. For example, we know that Israel was... Um, we're not on the tape yet, are we? Yeah. <laughs> Ever since you prayed, We're not yet on there yet. I'm just prepping the people a little bit. Oh, okay. Everything, everything that um, that as up to this point that we were at, we're living in the day where we have seen Israel, the people, the Jews, come back to their land. Now, I'm 82 years old, so I remember back in 1948 when they became a nation. Well, in the Old Testament, it was prophesied that that was going to happen. And it happened. And we see it happening and all the different prophecies about Israel and the people coming back and the wars that they were going to have. All that is in the Bible. Okay? So... We're living in a day that we can see uh, prophecy being fulfilled, okay? Now, where I want to start tonight is in Revelation 
chapter 7. We've already covered one, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, so we're going to get in, in chapter 7 tonight. Uh, just to give you, and let's go ahead and start now, okay? <laughs> are, you, are we on now? Well, you've been on, huh? <laughs> okay. Might have to throw that tape away. <clears throat> we got plenty of tapes, believe me. Uh, up at this point, we remember in Revelation chapter 1 when, uh, when Jesus is speaking to, and all, and that th those that read this Bible and, and share this about this in and, and the book of Revelation will be blessed, and those that hear it will be blessed. And he talked to the churches. Uh, in chapter uh, 2 and 3, and then 4, uh, he gives us a picture of heaven. Okay, remember that? Come up here. After this, I saw four angels stationed at the four corners of the earth. All right, he's in, he's in 7. Okay. So anyway, chapter uh, 5 and 6, basically it's all in heaven, about the throne. Remember that? All about the rainbow and all of that. The other day I was, we was reading in Revelation, it talked about the altar, altar like this, and the fire was on the altar. And, and of course, in our mind, we think about a type of fire that uh, we're familiar with. Well, spiritual fire won't burn you up. There can be a spiritual fire right on this altar, and it won't burn anything up. But it'll put a little something in you, in, 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 in you, I'll tell you that right now. So how many of you know when there's fire on the altar, don't go get the fire department to put it out. It's just spiritual fire. <laughs> so we see that there's an altar and then there's a throne. Of course, you remember all of that in, in chapter um, 5 and 6. So we're down to 7 now. So after this, I saw four angels, which we see on the board, at four corners of the earth, firmly holding back the four winds of the earth so that no wind should uh, blow on the earth or sea or upon any tree. Well, when you read that, you say, well, one of what that is. Well, God has a purpose. Okay? So no more, there ain't going to be no wind on the earth. There's a reason. So let's move on to the next. Here we go. Then I saw... A second angel coming up from the east, the rising of the sun, and the carrying the seal of the living God. And with a loud voice, underline that seal of the living God, because he's going to put that on some folks' head, namely the 144,000. And with a loud voice, he called out to the four angels who had been given authority and power to endure, er, to endure, endure earth and sea. Verse 3 saying, Harm neither the earth nor sea nor the trees until we have sealed the bond servants of our God upon their forehead. So now we're going to find out there's going to be 144,000 Israelites, 12,000 from, uh, from each tribe, 12 tribes, 144,000 that will be sealed with the seal of God. And how many of you know we've been sealed with the Holy Ghost? Yeah, so we've been sealed, meaning that we belong to God. It's good to belong to God, you know. I hate to belong to the devil. Some folks do, you know. In fact, let me give you a scripture on that, just in case you think I'm just blowing wind. Look at, uh, put up on the board, First uh, John three ten. <clears throat> By this it is made clear who takes their nature from God and are his children. Now God has given us his nature. How many of you know that? And who takes their nature from the devil? Who did? <laughs> well, we all had our nature from the devil. 
That's why he took us out of the kingdom of darkness and put us up in the kingdom of the Son of God and gave us his nature, that is God's nature. Now notice this, from the devil and are his children. Somebody told me a joke the other day when I shared one of my little stories in Kmart. No, it wasn't Kmart, it was Walmart. It was a woman, she was all bent over and everything, but a, a, jolly, a jolly good old lady. <laughs> so I told her my joke, she laughed, you know, and then she went around the store, come back to me, she says, now you told me your story, let me tell you my story. I said, well, is it clean? He said, it's pretty clean. I said, well, I'll take a chance. So she told me her little story. She said, the church was full of people and the devil walked in and everybody left but one man. And the devil come up to him and said, how come you didn't run? And the man said, well, I'm not, I'm not scared of you. Well, why aren't you scared of of me and because and the man said because I've been married to your sister for 30 years <laughs> did anybody identify with that <laughs> y'all pray for me here <laughs> I thought I'd wake you up tonight <laughs> well that's true if you're not a child of God then you're a child of the devil and when you die, you will go where the devil is, where your daddy is. I mean, that's just the fact of the gospel. Now, that's not God's will. It's not God's will for anybody to perish, but we all have a will. That's why the Bible says, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. You can't be hanky-panky with it. Either you're serving the devil or you're serving God. If you're serving yourself, you're serving God, believe me. Feels good to serve God, don't it? Oh, yes. <laughs> How many has ever served the devil besides me, your pastor? Yeah, all of us have. <laughs> See, that's, that's, how many of you know God's grace is so beautiful? He took, when we accept Jesus, he took us out of the domain of the devil. The devil didn't come, is not our father. We don't have his nature no more. He, come, he gives us his nature and puts us into the kingdom of the Son of God. Now we can say, Abba, Father. He's our Father. Now let's finish reading that. And are his children, no one who does not practice righteousness, who does not conform to God's will in purpose, thought, and action, is, a, is of God. So if you're not of God, you're of the devil. Neither is anyone who does not love his brother, his fellow believer in Christ. Oh my goodness. Whew. Think about it, milk that a little bit. How many have been guilty? But we're not guilty no more. Brother, I love you. Ball head and all. <laughs> I don't care what you say about me. I love you. Read it. Read it good and put it in your brain right now. You know, if we go on with that, it says that we're actually a murderer. But I don't want to put you, I mean, we need a little expert. We need a little something here to put us up tonight. <laughs> Too much truth in one night. The fire of God will just burn you right in the chair. <laughs> Some will spare you. Not much, but a little bit. All right, let's get back over here now. Now, let's get something else on the board there. Where we were, where we left off in... in, in uh, Revelation 7. And then I heard how many were sealed, marked, out of every tribe of the sons of Israel. There were 144,000. How many of you know the Jehovah Witness claims that? <laughs> That's who they think they, they are. Bless their hearts. Well, you'll find out uh, as we read the Bible, there's multitudes of multitudes of multitudes of people up there from every tribe and nation and tongue praising God. I wonder who those folks are. Well, we want to stay in the scripture. We'll find out. <laughs> so 
Look what it says. The next verse. Right, we're going to go 12,000, 12,000, 12,000. So, that'll, so let's move on to verse 9. Okay. So those other verses talking about the, each 12,000 comes from the different tribes. Okay. We got the picture. After this, I looked and a vast host appeared, which no one could count. Gathered out of what? Every nation from all tribes and people and languages. These stood before the throne and before the Lamb. That's Christ. They were attired in white robes with palm branches in their hands. That's a lot of folks. It sounds like it's a bit more than 144,000, don't it? Yeah, it's a whole lot more than 144,000. Well, where do these people come from? Well, we're going to study the scriptures. That's why we're here. We're going to find out. All right, look at the next verse. Well, in, in loud voices. Everybody say loud voices. Loud yeah, that means I can sock it to you with a loud voice. <laughs> In loud voice, they cried, saying, Our salvation, well, we know that, that, that these are people that's been redeemed, don't we? Just that one word, our salvation, is due to our God. You know the reason you're saved tonight? And I'm saved? Because of God. We were running as hard as we could. And God intervened by his Holy Spirit and saved us. Who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb, who, who, who is, as God the Father, sitting on the throne and to the Lamb, to them we owe our deliverance. Yes. To them. Who's them? God the Father, God the Son. We owe our deliverance. We owe our salvation to him. We have nothing to brag about. We're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we owe our salvation to God and the Lamb, Jesus Christ. So therefore, we don't want to get too puffed up. Paul talks about that in uh, Romans 11, when he was talking to the Gentiles about the Jews. All right, let's go to the next verse. And all of the angels were standing round the throne, round the elders of the heavenly Sanhedrin. How many were they up there? 24. Remember, it's 24 when we, we covered that in the other chapters there. And four living creatures. Remember the four living creatures? They had eyes in the front, eyes in the back. They had six wings. God has some strange creatures. And they fell asleep. Have you seen anybody falling asleep, punch him? <laughs> Look at that guy there. Love you, brother. When I see eyes shut. <laughs> now, if he starts snoring, punch him. <laughs> and the four living creatures, and they fell prostrate before the throne and worshiped God. Now, people don't understand that. They think, well, they just fell. You know, let me tell you something. When the Spirit of God, the anointing of God, the presence of God gets strong enough, you won't sit in your chair. You'll be on your face. Your nose will be in the carpet. It is so powerful. Now, some of us have experienced some of that, which has brought us down. And see, that's just the way it is. And you could worship God 24-7 and, and, and wouldn't even be aware of time. See, it's a different arena. It's a different arena in the spirit. We're natural people. We have these natural bodies. That's why Jesus said you've got to be born again before you can see the kingdom of God. Now, when you're born again, your eyes are open. Your spiritual eyes. Talk about the spirit of the eyes right here. Our spirit man has eyes. The other day, I was, um, since me had gone to a hospital, and boy, we loaded that hospital down with tracks. I mean, I went in all the, the, the visiting rooms and gave out all the literature we had, 
fill that hospital with the word of God. And this one person came into my presence. I don't, know, I don't like this sometimes, but you, <sighs> I mean, know what I'm talking about. It's like, what's, what, what is this, you know? It's not, <sighs> how many understand what I'm talking about? So you, you love them and you pray for them, but it's like, you know, <laughs> you got that? <laughs> and I said, Susan, tell me your discernment. And she said, same thing. See? So we have the same spirit. And when you meet a child of the devil, you can discern it. Now, you don't judge them, you pray for them. See, the, it works automatic. The Holy Spirit just does it. And some things you might feel and sense, and you wonder why you're feeling this, that's the Holy Spirit's feeling. You just, so no need to blow out, blow everybody out of the church, just pray. Hello? Just pray. That's the, the discernment of the Holy Spirit. And you want to check that out, check it out in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 3, and 4. 1 Corinthians 2, 3, and 4. You can check that out about the spiritual man and the carnal man. The carnal man is full of jealousy and envy and, and judgmental and all of that, but the spiritual man discerns all things, but he himself is not judged. That's just the way it works in the spirit arena. Okay, now, what an experience that is. You might say, well, will you think we will ever experience that? Yes, you will. Yeah, yes, you will. Exciting, isn't it? All right, next verse. Uh, Amen, so be it. They cried blessings and glory and majesty and splendor and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and might be ascribed to our God to the ages and ages, forever and ever, throughout the eternities of eternities. Amen. That's all they can say. Man, it wants to make you speak in tongues. <sighs> See, you got to you gotta identify with the scriptures. you got to identify with these people up there when they're in the presence of God. What are they feeling? What would cause them to fall on their face? And say all that they said. If the Lord would turn it up just a little bit in our lives, that heavenly fire would probably burn my hair off my head. <laughs> so you can tell the people that's been in the fire. <laughs> all right i'm just you know i know you've worked all day you're tired you're one eyeball is trying to you know understand i did i've been there okay <clears throat> all right now look at it says go to the next then addressing me now that was nice wasn't it somebody's up there addressing john why don't he address himself? Dressing. Oh, 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 addressing. I'm sorry. Addressing me. One of the elders of the Sanhedrin, heavenly Sanhedrin said, who are these people clothed in the long white robes and from where they have come? Now we're going to get the answer. Prophet, when you, when you read prophecy, it will interpret it for you in the scripture. You go over to Daniel, Talks about the prophecy and then the interpretation. The prophecy and the interpretation. Not every one, not every prophecy is like that, but many of them, uh, the Bible will interpret itself if you just read on and start studying. So, who are these people? I want to know myself. All right, next verse. I replied, sir, you know. Now John's talking to the angel. He says, you know. And he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. Oh. Now, I've got to take this picture. Where are these people? In heaven. Okay. Where were they before they were not in heaven? Down here on earth. During what period of time? During the tribulation years. 
All right, very simple, not complicated. Now they're up there. Well, how did they get up there? That's what I want to know. How did they get up there? Had their heads cut off. Well, what part of them is up there? Spirit. Man is spirit, soul, and body. The spirit is the soul. When it's removed out of the, the body, goes to be with the Lord, we take the body and we put it back into the ground. And one day it'll be resurrected into a glorified body. So we know that these people up there in their spirit being, in their spirit uh, selves, are up there in heaven. So, now notice this, have washed their robes, now we know they're redeemed, they've been, they're cleansed by the blood of Jesus, they have the, their, uh, they're, they're absolutely ready for heaven in their spiritual of themselves. So you don't really see me, you see this shell. How many in here Back in the old days, we would have the pecan trees, and we'd pick up the pecan trees, and we would crack the pecans, and we'd get the meat inside and throw it away and eat the shell. <laughs> hmm? What? Huh? What'd you do with the shell? You threw the shell to the ground, it went back into the dust, you ate the meat, you ate what's inside. See, God does not look at the outward appearance. He looks at the heart. He sees the heart. I know we stand in front of the mirror. Make the outside look so pretty. How do you think I look? Jesus, how do you think I look? And his eyes burn right through all of that makeup and all of that <laughs> carnality and looks right into your heart. And then all of a sudden you see what he sees and you <coughs> God have mercy upon me. Even though we're saved when his light shines. See what you're experiencing, Greg, you, I've had that along the way. Boy, I, after a while, you know, I mean, praise God, I'm so, hallelujah, I'm so really, really upright and holy and all of that. And that's true as far as God's concerned. And God says, now I'm going to put a, just turn on, up the light just a little bit more of where Bob can see just how selfish he is. Always want to eat all the ice cream. Not mentioned in no names. <laughs> How many of you understand what I'm talking about? That's okay. See, that's when you'll cry, you'll weep. You say, oh God, I thought I overcome it. Oh God, have you been wrestling with the angel? And, huh? Do you, you understand what I'm talking about? Some of you have been with God long enough. But that's the purification. That's God dealing with the old carcass. That's God dealing with that old man. Experimentally. And then in all of that, when the dust is settled... You walk more sober. You have a greater understanding of spiritual things. You know what is of the devil and what is of God. You know what is of the flesh. You know what is of, of the Holy Spirit. See, it's imparted into us. <laughs> By the Spirit of God. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what the Lord has prepared for them, but he has showed it to us by his spirit. And so you will reach a, a, a level of maturity as you read the word of God. In the word of God, there is spirit. In the word of God, there is life. And you will be able to draw from the word of God all the life in the spirit that's in that word into your spirit man. Your spirit man just sucks it in like a sponge. Well, I'll fast and I'll pray. That's good. 
It's scripture. But the final analysis, when God sees you're ready, I was once blind, but now I see. Once I didn't see the, the multitude of, of, of angels up there, that mighty army of God, but God opened my spiritual eyes and I saw there's more with us than them. Yes, see, it's spiritual. We're spirit beings. So we have to pass through all of this natural, carnal part of our being for God to get to the inner man and do that work in him. Notice this, God working in us, in our inner man, making us willing to do his good pleasure. Now you've made some statements. God will put you to test on that. And you'll find that God will work that truth in, in your very soul, in your, in your very being. It'll be worked into you. Now here's these people up there. They were living during the tribulation years. They were, they were preaching Christ. They were testifying about Christ. And the Antichrist army had them, captured them, and had their heads cut off. And now we find them in heaven. All right? Now, let's finish reading that a little bit, okay? Next verse. For this reason they are now before the very throne of God. Talking about these spirits up there, which came out of the great tribulation. You see, uh... Bob, is that us? Is that the church? Can I say something off the record? <laughs> if there's no, if there's no uh, rapture, that's us. I will say that again because I think some of it that just don't seem to sink in yet. If there's no rapture, that's us. So we encourage each other with these words. I don't know how I can encourage you with those words. Everybody say, that's us. Yes. If there ain't no rapture. <laughs> All right, now, here's what you want to see. See, once you identify these people, we know where they came from. It's not the church. From uh, chapter 4... Till about uh, all through uh, the tribulation, you don't say, you don't hear nothing about the church whatsoever. But there are people saved during the tribulation years, but they lose their life because they didn't take the mark. If they took the mark, they ain't up there. They are gonna be down there. How I many you understand that? So all those people that you see right there that the Bible's talking about are those that did not take the mark. They witnessed for their Lord and had their, they lost their head. Well, that's nothing new. They're doing that over there right now. Many of our brothers and sisters. How many of you know that? That's happening in our generation. See, I couldn't have taught uh, this to you guys 10 years ago. You weren't able to take it. But now, I got to tell you, because it's upon us, okay? For this reason, they are now before the very throne of God. For this reason. What reason? What reason could they be up there? <clears throat> For this reason, they are now. Now, John sees this in a vision. He's seeing the future. Now, before, before the very throne of God. They're right, they're right before the very throne of God. I tell you one thing, when this body of mine quits breathing, I trust the Lord because it ain't no way in the world I can, my spirit can climb a ladder to try to get to heaven. I have to put my full faith that God will resurrect me and cause my spirit man to be ascended into heaven. Think about that for a moment. 
If you can trust God for that, why can't you trust him for other things on the earth? Forget about the worrying. Forget about the fear. God's not giving us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Don't worry about anything. You're only down here but a short time. My goodness, you see that long wall? This is your life right here. See that little speck right there? How many see that little speck? That's your life right there. How many sees it? Raise your hand. Some of you can't even see it. Well, that's the way your life is down here. <laughs> see, we need, to, we need to wake up and realize that Life is but a vapor. You know, on a, on a tombstone, you have the day that Bob Tilton was born, 1933. The day he went to heaven, was ascended in 20, whatever. The little space between there is your life span. Now, what are you doing with your life? Oh. Eating ice cream and cake seven days a week. <laughs> well, you can kick a little bit of that. Well, I know what you're doing. You're workers for God. Most of you, I know what you're doing. Aren't you glad that, that you are serving God with the little bit of time you have? Yeah. You think you guys are going to be around here another 10 years or 30 years? Let's see, 30 years from now, you'd be what? Yeah, I thought so. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're 78. Yeah, there. <laughs> uh, or 75, 76. Add 20 to that. <laughs> I'm 82, 20 years from now. Where are you going to be 30 years from now, 20 years from now, 10 years from now, 5 years from now? I tell you, we can cut it down, really down. I don't want to discourage you, but I tell you what, I'm saying to you, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. This is good preaching then. <laughs> All right, look what it says. And serve him day and night in his sanctuary. Now, if you're not careful, you can get tired of serving God down here. This little bit of time you have down here, you can say, I'm tired of serving. Well, go serve the devil. But you'll reap what you sow. Yes. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, be my guest. I'll preach your funeral for you. Won't charge you a thing. Yeah. Now, once you leave this earth and you go down there and be with the devil, you're going to serve him. And they tell me it's hot down there, too. <laughs> For this reason, they are now before the very throne of God and serve him day and night in his sanctuary, his temple. And he who is sitting upon the throne will protect and spread his tabernacle over and shelter them with his presence. I need too bad. I tell you, that ain't too bad. In our little mind, we say, is there any fun in that? It's the ultimate because of the atmosphere that you're in. Your whole being sucks in as much as possible the very presence of God, which is life. How many ever felt real good? Now, I'm not talking about when you were on drugs now. <laughs> See, that's why people get on drugs. They, they want to feel, uh, listen, let me tell you something. Just walk straight down here. When you get to heaven, I'm going to tell you, when you get in the presence of God, you feel good all the time. All the time, 24-7, you'll feel good. Just being there, you'll feel good. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to just feel good all over, inside, outside. Wonderful. But let me tell you something. We're going to have a resurrected body, and we're going to be busy all over the universe. 
I haven't seen one universe out there God's given to me. Now, Bob, you go over there and take care of that universe. Yes, sir. Oh, you don't think so? Hmm? How many of you know God is the God of the universe? You don't have to believe that. Put it on your shelf. But our God's a big God. All right, let's go to the next. Now let's catch this. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun smite them, nor any scorching heat. I pondered on that verse of scripture. And the best that I can come up with is that they were down here during the tribulation years and though they didn't take the mark, so therefore they couldn't buy food, couldn't f- buy drink. They were hungry most of the time before, they f- before the Antichrist army found them. And then, they, they, and, and then they wouldn't deny the Lord, and so they cut their heads off, and so they're up there. And so the Lord said, now, down there you suffered that, but you won't suffer it no more. You shall, you shall never thirst anymore. Have you ever been hungry? And you say amen to that. Amen. I come up during the depression. Everybody was depressed. Nobody was impressed. But everybody was depressed. <laughs> See, everything was rationed. When you ate your portion of food, <laughs> that's it. The dog didn't get much in those days. Let me tell you something, you chewed the bone up. Yeah, I'm serious, you chewed the bone. We didn't know nothing about cholesterol back in those days. We ate skin, we ate everything. We did, the, the chicken leg, we'd suck the skin off of them. Say, y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. Bologna, bologna was steak. That, that, you want, man, bologna, let, bologna, well, bl- double my bologna. I love bologna. <laughs> see, well, see, you ain't been hungry. <laughs> Fat back? <laughs> Somebody bored with life? Just come to me. I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll shut you up in a room for about seven days. And you'll have a whole, whole new lease on life. Like number one, where's the ice cream? Where's the cake, the pie? And see what we'll do, we'll cook, we'll cook all this food and everything and the odor goes into the room and you can't eat none of it. And when you come out of that room, you'll have a new lease on life. Man, you'll come out. Where is, where, where's, where's the kitchen at? Well, we don't have nothing but possum and gravy. Pour it on me, boy, pour it on me. Yeah, when you get hungry. So you haven't been reading your Bible because if you read your Bible, when they, when they seized the city, did you know what they seized the city? They camped around the city walls and you, nobody went in and nobody come out and they starved everybody inside the city. And then they started eating their horses, the dogs, they found the rats, they stewed them up. If they had any rubber bands, they'd chew on that. That ain't half of it. And when somebody starts looking at you like, and li- licking their lips, <laughs> you know you next. <laughs> All right, church, that's reality. I said it in a comical way. <clears throat> So when you see they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun smite them. Have you ever been out in the sun so hot? I mean, it was hot. I used to plow. I learned to plow when I was 10 years old. Oh, that mule was named Jack. Oh, Jack and me, we were best friends. Jack and me were good friends. I'd get tired of plowing. I'd take all the gear off of him. I'd jump on him. We'd go (laughs) run. Put him back in the, in, the, in, the, in the stall, you know, and I'd feed him. I'd go to the house. Grandma would feed me chicken, mashed potatoes, 
biscuits. Those biscuits were about that big around Grandma used to make. Slide them babies like that, and you put that there, uh, molasses in there. You, 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 some of you don't even know what molasses is, do you? Oh, you had, to, had some molasses on the table. All right, church. That's an important scripture. What's the next verse? Last verse, 17. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the waters of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Yes, there's a time we have to suffer. It's awful. It ain't good. It's bad. They went through the tribulation years. They lost their physical lives, but they gained eternal life. Now, is that the end of them? All right. Let me show you somewhere. Turn to Revelation. I got two minutes. Revelation, and I haven't even started preaching what I want to preach. Anyway, turn to Revelation 20, verse 4. Just in case you got tired of being in the, in the sanctuary. Everybody there? Here we go. Are you ready? Then I saw thrones, and sitting on them were those to whom authority to act as judges. And a past sentence was entrusted, and past sentence was entrusted. Who are those? How many of you know Corinthians tells us we will judge angels? Hello? We are already in our resurrected body. And we will judge. Now this is right after the Lord has come back. He settled Armageddon and everything. And, and then he says, and Also I saw the souls of those. Who are those souls? Huh? Remember the souls? We just read a little while ago. In chapter 7 and chapter 6. Got it? You got it? Who are these souls? Those are the ones that God said you'll never thirst again. You remember them? Yeah. Hmm? See, Bible interprets, the Bible interprets itself. Now notice, then I saw thrones and sitting on them were, were those to whom authority to act as judges and to pass sentence was entrusted. And I say that's us, according to the scriptures. And I saw the soul. Now he sees these souls. Where do these souls come from? Somebody tell me. Tribulation years. You got it? Tribulation years. So you've got to identify. And I saw the souls of those who had been slain with axes, beheaded. How many think I would look good without my head? Who raised their head back there? Hand back there. See, listen, it's over. Did you hear what I said? It's over. Just that quick. I'm not jarring some of you. Just like that, it's over. You're right there in heaven. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Give me the scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse what? Right, 8. And I saw the souls of those who had been slain with axes, beheaded for their witnessing to Jesus during the tribulation years. I'm, I'm paraphrasing that. And for preaching and testifying for the word of God and who had refused to pay homage to the beast or his statue and had not accepted his mark or permitted it to be stamped on their forehead or on their hands, and they lived again. How many of you know that's resurrection right there? Can you see that? And they lived again. What is that? Resurrection. And they lived again, notice this, and ruled with Christ the Messiah a thousand years, during the millennium years, in their resurrected body. How many see the picture? Okay. I hope that helped you a little bit. You got your paperwork. Read it, study it, and we'll continue to uh, open up more revelation to you. Okay? All right, any questions? Any questions?